In the last video, we looked at how to put an app bar up using VS Code and Flutter. In this video, we're going to add a background and an icon. Now, as we do this, we'll be running the app on the Mac OS first, and later on the simulator. You'll see me turn the simulator off in between because I'm running an M1 Mac with eight gig, and as a result, it does slow it down. With that said, let's get back into the code and take a look at the old code we had and run it And here it is. It's run and it shows the Mac Mingle. So in the last video, we showed how to get that header, Mac Mingle. In this video, we'll dive into adding the background color and adding the icon and changing some colors. So here's the original code that we looked at. So what we need to do here is go just above where the previous title constant text data is and add app bar and a colon, and app bar, and a paren. And then we're going to go ahead and comment it so we know what we're doing here. We're going to add a background color. To add a background color, we use this command. Background color, colon, and then the color that we want. And as soon as we type that, we see some options, but let's go ahead and type that colors in with the color that we want. We'll choose light green. Now once that's done, let's go ahead and run and debug this on Mac OS. And here it is. Well, let's close that and run it in the simulator. We popped up simulator here. Let's go to File, Open Simulator 18 and 15 Pro, and you'll see me shutting this down in between to optimize the performance of my MacBook M1. Let's run it. And watch the simulator. And there it is. It's popped up and the Mac Mingle now has a green background. Notice that the Mac Mingle itself is in black and the background is in green. So we now know how to set the color for the background. The question is, can we change the color of the text? So diving right into that, let's get back to the code, close the widget inspector, and we go to the title line where it says text data Mac Mingle, and that's where we add the additional attributes. So let's use the style widget and Select Textile, and then we have some options pop up. Let's pick the color option here, and let's change that to white. And then let's reopen the simulator and run this. Now you see it with the green background and the white text. So you can see the green comes from the background color and the white comes from the title component. So let's go back in there and change that to black. And do a dynamic refresh and go back and look at the screen and it's changed back to black. So now we've covered the background color, the font color, and in the next phase, what we're going to try and cover is adding an icon up here. So for that, let's close this so we get some speed back. First, let's comment this so we know what this code does. So here, we're doing text color. We're adding text and we're doing the color right here. So next, we're going to move on to doing the icons. So let's add some space and uh, comment here that we're going to add an icon.
Icon needs a padding. Padding is a mandatory component of an icon. What we're really saying here is we want that icon to be a certain distance away from the edge. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a right offset. In other words, offset from the right. And we're going to use 45 pixels. So the icon that we choose will be 45 pixels away from the right of the screen. All this does is put the padding in. Now we've got to add the icon. So as a child, we go ahead and add the icon. And we've got to choose the icon. And I'm choosing favorite. There are many icons and you should get familiar with that. So you pick the icon that best suits your need. At this point, I don't know whether we can create and add our own icons. So running this on the Mac OS, we see, let's drag that back over. There it is. The icon is on the right and it's in black or gray. Now let's look at changing the color of the icon. We'll go in and type color and then colors, and we'll pick pink. And there's an error here, let me see what's missing. Oh, there's one uh, close paren too much. Okay, take that out. Okay. So now let's run it. And there's the icon in pink. You need to get familiar with the icon options to fully utilize this. And I'll look into whether or not we can create our own icons. Now the next thing is, can we size that icon? Can we make it larger or smaller? So let's go ahead and make the size 24.0. And then let's run it. And that seems very similar to the previous size. So let's close that and go back into the code and change that to say 14, see whether that changes it. Yes, it made it smaller. Let's return it back to its uh, original size of 24, which looks better, I think. And now let's dynamically run it and bring it back. And that looks better. So that's how you adjust the color and the size of an icon. Now this is one way to write the code. We'd like to take a look at another way to show the child coding. That might be more intuitive and easier to visualize and manage. Now they're both identical. The first thing we'll do is we'll comment the existing code out and then we'll go ahead and replicate that so we can edit it. Let's run it just to check. Yep, it's all working. There it is. And now we're going to break that down into blocks that are more intuitive to read. And this is what it will look like. Instead of having it all on one line where it may not be quite intuitive, you can break it down into separate lines under the child icon, and you can see it more clearly, and in some ways it's easier perhaps to go in and edit it. So for example, if you change the favorite icon just pretty quick, now one could argue they're identical, it's all about preference. So there are two different ways. Let's go ahead and run this. And there it is, it looks just like the original code. So there are different ways you can represent the code, and you need to choose the format that's optimized for you. We've covered the app bar color, the app bar text color, and an icon. And keep in mind that icons can be active or inactive. In this case, it's inactive, but you could make it a click that takes you somewhere. So let's run this on the simulator one more time. And there you have it. In the next video, we'll look at the body. We'll look at how we put content into the body. And in a video later on, we'll do the footer, the option menus at the bottom. So with that, I hope this video was helpful and you'll find the code below. Thanks so much for watching.